Hello everyone, this is Mr. Kazi here again, and we're going to talk about atoms, isotopes, and ions today. And let's first review what we know about the atom so far. If you've been following along, you know that the atom is mostly space, has a very small, dense nucleus, it has positive protons, neutral neutrons, both of which are in the uh, nucleus of the atom. And remember now, that nucleus is so small, it's one trillionth of the entire volume of the atom, but that's where most of the mass is, right there in the nucleus. And then we have the uh, negative electrons. So we've got this picture of the atom so far uh, that we're using to help describe what we believe all matter is made up of. One of the most important tools that you're going to be using now is the periodic table. It is the tool from here on out. You need to know the periodic table. You need to have a periodic table with you all the time. And down the road, I'm going to do a, a, a lesson on the seven secrets of the periodic table. And I'm going to just let you in on some of the knowledge on the periodic table that a lot of people just kind of miss out on. Okay, so here's some things that right off the bat we can learn about the periodic table. The name, the symbol, the atomic mass, and the atomic number of an element. All four of those things are on the major periodic tables. Now there's some periodic tables that have everything on it and they almost get so cluttered they become um, uh, unusable. But a nice simple periodic table uh, with the name, symbol, atomic mass, and atomic number will work really well for you. If you don't have a periodic table you can go to mrkazi.com and you should be able to download a periodic table from there. If not, send me an email to mrkazi at mrkazi.com and I'll be glad to uh, email you a periodic table. All right, so we know that we need to have a periodic table. We need to understand what the atom is like and we can start looking at how to understand maybe isotopes and ions. One of the interesting things about isotopes and ions is that we can write nuclear symbols for them. And so you want to be able to understand nuclear symbols. And nuclear symbols consist of uh, the symbol of the element, the mass number, the atomic number, and the charge. Okay? So let's look and learn how to write those. There's the mass number, the atomic number, and the charge. Remember that a stable atom has no charge and pretty much the only place you find a stable atom is on the periodic table. Except for the noble gases, just about every atom obtains a charge of some type. It either gains electrons or loses electrons and uh, gets a positive or negative charge. The atomic number is the number of protons in the nucleus. The mass number is the number of protons and neutrons. You're not sure about any of those? Go back and uh, review this part. But make sure that you uh, know uh, the mass number, the atomic number, and where the charge goes. Isotopes are just um, atoms of the same element but with a number, a different number of neutrons. And, and remember, the neutrons and electrons change in an atom, but the protons do not change. The protons determine what an atom is. An ion is an atom that has a charge because it gained or lost electrons. Remember, an electron is negative, has a negative charge, okay? And so, an atom that loses electrons is positive and called a cation. And an ion that gains electrons is negative and called an anion. All right, let's look at nuclear symbol practice. How we can take and put together nuclear symbols and learn to write them. And a lot can be learned from a nuclear symbol. This helps us to understand neutrons, protons, electrons, the gaining and losing of electrons. It's all right there. So we really want to be sure that we can understand how to do that. All right, there's a sodium ion. And we realize that it's a cation. It has a positive charge. 
And we want to know how many protons, neutrons, and electrons. So if you look at that, the atomic number tells us there's 11 protons. If you take 23 and minus 11, okay, that's going to give you your, your neutrons. Neutrons will be your mass number minus your protons. Now that's because mass number is protons and neutrons. It's not the atomic mass. The atomic mass on your periodic table, remember that that's the weighted average of all the isotopes for a certain atom. Okay? So what you want to do here is remember that mass number, even though it's very similar to atomic mass, is not atomic mass. Mass number is the sum of the protons and the sum of the neutrons. So then we have 12 neutrons, 23 minus 11. And there's 10 electrons. And 10 electrons because we notice there's one positive charge, and that positive charge tells us that we must have lost an electron. We lost one electron, as a matter of fact. So 11 minus 1, 10. Oxygen is an anion. We know it's an anion because it, it gained two electrons. Okay? That's why we have a negative two up there. Protons, the atomic number. Neutrons, 16 minus 8 is 8. And there were eight electrons in a stable atom, so now there's two. So if this was a stable atom, there'd be no charge, and there would be eight electrons. But it's gained two electrons, so now we have 10 electrons. Okay? Here's the chlorine ion. It's an anion because it gained an electron. 17 protons, 18 neutrons, and 18 electrons. It gained one electron. Okay, let's quickly do the carbon. It's just an atom. There's no charge. It's not an ion. It has six protons, eight neutrons, and six electrons. Because remember, the number of protons and the number of electrons in a stable atom are the same. Did you get that one right? The hydrogen ion is a cation. There's one proton. One minus one is zero neutrons and zero electrons. There's another hydrogen isotope. Has a little bit difference in the neutrons. So this is deuterium, actually. Hope you got that right. If you have any questions, remember, you can always check out 